What's going on guys? It's Justin from the J Media back with another video and today we'll be featuring Ian's beautiful 8th Gen Civic Si. So we have the owner over here, Ian. What's up? So yeah, um, I guess share with us a little bit about the car. For people who don't know what this car is, what's the year, make and model of this car and then we'll go through the mods later on. Alright, so it's a 2011 Civic Si. Uh, I bought it my sophomore year of college. Okay. Uh, so I've had it about seven years now. Didn't Dang. think, actually I shouldn't say I didn't think I would take it this far because I definitely, <laughs> I definitely had a feeling that this might happen. Um, so it's a full bolt on, so your typical Skunk 2 header exhaust, we just went over that before. Um, wheels, as far as that goes, it's raised 57 DRs, I got questions about the, um, the offsets and everything all the time. It's actually my Facebook, like personal Facebook bio. <laughs> um, but they're uh, 17 by 9 plus 38, I run a 3 mil spacer in the front just for the sake of it. Front tires are 255.40, and the rears are just 38 offset with 235.40s. Nice man. It's uh, yeah, it's super detailed, but we'll be going through a detail. So you say seven years you've owned this car. Um, I'm guessing it has went through so many stages. Besides the exhaust, I'm sure you have yeah, went through so a lot of different the, your typical setups. Full bolt-ons that had the Skunk Team exhaust with the loudest guy in the world with the slowest <laughs> possible. Uh, That's me right now. <laughs> that, uh, no offense taken. I've been there. I love it. I love the setup. Uh, but yeah, so I did that and then I got yeah. a good deal. I was between all the different options, Turbo, Craftworks, CTSC. Uh, I got a good deal on a Comtech kit. Mm -hmm. So I bought that and the guy was selling the aftercooler with it. And I, for one, didn't realize how important aftercoolers were. And okay. didn't think I could swing the extra $300, which was a mistake because like as a package deal, it was a lot cheaper. And I'm like, oh, I won't buy it this time. Four months later, I bought the aftercooler. <laughs> um, Ooh, you can send over here so you can get the car in the shot too, if you don't mind. No, that's fine. You can send over right oh, here. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I know some people keep saying like, oh, you're facing the guy, film, you know, talking, but there's no car, so no, we'll get both in the frame. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, so I did the uncooled setup, and so that made around 290, 300 horsepower, at 8 pounds of boost. It was a ported blower, uh -huh. um, so it was decent, but like intake temps were like 190 degrees after one pool, which is really not good. Yeah, <laughs> dang. Yeah, so, we, so I did that, and then a couple months later, like I said, I bought the aftercooler. And I did a K24 crank pulley and a small corner pulley, so it's overspending the shit out of it. But it made 13 and a half pounds of boost, made 363 horsepower, which was really cool. Dang, um, to the wheels? Dang, uh, that's a beast. And then, what, what did I do after that? So, after that, I got my custom icebox made, which we'll, I'll show you guys. And I also had the blower sent out to get rebuilt. I did coated rotors with it. Um, it made the same power, but it made a lot more torque at the same boost, which was cool. So the blower ran a little bit cooler, which was nice. Okay. Uh, and let's see, so around that time I was also, I had the white Bar 7, so it's E37 reps, which I still miss those wheels. I miss one on white. Uh, eventually I'll get a set if I can find something that actually fits. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's hard to do on these cars. Uh, but yeah, so after a couple of years with that, um, yeah, I had the CT, CT kit for three, four years. And then I was going to go turbo, actually, not too many people know that. Yeah, I was going to ask like supercharged yeah. and turbo. What made you like, you know, so, decide that? Like I said, I was gonna go turbocharged because I wanted to make like 450, 500 horsepower. So I messaged Jose from Merc Racing, and I'm like, and he was selling the uh, the custom fuel rails at the time. I'm like, I've had all your stuff forever. I like I like supporting you and your product. So do you still have any fuel rails? Because I'm gonna go turbo, and I want mm -hmm. one like Merc Racing product that I can keep. Okay. He's like, well, how much power do you want to make? And I'm like, 450, 500. He's like, well, we can do that with a supercharger. I'm like, wow. Oh, yeah. I'm like, but I want to keep air to water. He's like, oh, well, I'm working on this like top secret project. And I'm like, well, okay. So Dang. I volunteered myself and I was supposed to be like the development car for that, mm -hmm. um, which I was. I sold the CT kit, I got everything together, and um, I, long story short, I killed the supercharger. I had it set up for boost by gear, um, I hadn't hooked up any of my gauges or anything yet, and so while I was burping the car, everything after the first start, um, I wasn't really paying attention to anything else, I couldn't tell because I wasn't monitoring it. And I guess the bypass valve stayed closed because I flipped the hoses for the boost by gear backwards. Okay. So at idle, there was no airflow through the blower and in Ooh. like five minutes I overheated it and the car just like screeched to a halt. Didn't know what happened. Um, just actually turned the car back over, everything seemed okay. And I was chasing vacuum leaks and shit. I pulled mm -hmm. the blower out and the rotors were destroyed. Dang. And obviously they wouldn't warranty it because that was my fault. Um, mm. So then that's around the time that I moved down here. So I had it with like the full like E85 fuel return system. Uh, so I got it tuned again with full bolt-ons and the fuel system. So it's at like I don't, at idle, I was using like 1% of my overall duty cycles. 
1300 cc injectors with the bolts on car is stupid. Um, it's a lot. <laughs> Dang. It was the Derek and Innovative Motorworks because the car drove flawlessly for those few months. I was able to drive mm -hmm. it down to Texas when I moved here. Mm -hmm. um, I had also kept finding metal shavings in my oil from the supercharger Oof. bits that had just been finely cheese grated and went through the oil. Um, and then when I moved out here, I had two cars and the one that I was supposed to drive down here was my daily and the brakes went out like that day. Like there's just uh, brake fluid all over my driveway. Oh driveway. man. I guess we're driving the white one down and it made it down here. Still no problems. And uh, eventually got a job down here, got the new supercharger. And so that's the setup as, as it is today. So That's awesome, man. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of, uh, I guess, like you said, seven years owning the yeah. car, you went through so, you know, so much with it. Yeah. yeah. Dang. So seven years of owning the car, how long did it take you before you went supercharger? Like for the first time? It was less than two years. Less than two years, okay. I my sophomore year of college, and then I think my junior year, um, I, I went back and forth every weekend to work, and I had some money saved up. Like I said, that deal popped up, and mm -hmm. all my college friends told me I should go turbo, but they also encouraged me to do anything that I possibly could. So, uh, <laughs> so I did it. Um, That's awesome. I, I drove the uncooled setup for maybe like three months before winter came, because I never drove it in winter because I had the other car. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I, I maybe I had like just finished tuning. I drove it three more times. Like, let's put more power into it, and then that was that was it. That's awesome, man. All right, so nice little backstory Ian has on the car. Let's dive into like what's been done to the car, like front, side, back, interior, engine bay, the full nine yards. All right, so front end of the car. Uh, quick run now. What's been done to it so far? Uh, so the front end is mostly stock. I have shortly after I bought the car, I bought the full OEM HFP kit. So that's an OEM lip. Um, and outside of that, it's just the eBay S204 STI lip. Uh, I get a lot of questions on that one, but uh, it fits pretty well if you take the time to install it. I do want to get rid of it and get a full splitter just so I don't have like cheap eBay parts on the car anymore. But, <laughs> just to protect the HFP lip? Yeah, that, honestly, that's the whole reason I bought it was just to prevent mm -hmm. from scratching it because they were discontinuing them. And I figured maybe a couple little holes drilled on the bottom wouldn't be so bad as bashing it off the ground. Um, yeah. I regret it. It saved me definitely a lot of headache, so that's good. Nice. Um, and outside of that, just the headlights are retrofitted with just basic mini H1 projectors. Uh, my friends over at Balkan Auto Works in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania did those for me um, several, several years ago. And that's still one of my first, that's probably one of my favorite mods to date. Okay, dang. All right, so front end, would you say that's, that's the body? It's a really clean setup. Like, it's, I don't know, for something on the road, most people see like, eh, you know, People who don't even know SIs at all would think it's a regular Civic, but it's so clean, makes great power, probably chops some pretty fast cars. <laughs> did you see the video with the Ferrari? I did, that was insane. <laughs> that, so that was fun. We'll talk about that, I guess, once we get the supercharger set up. That's, yeah. a, that's a cool story in yeah. itself. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, and then let's walk around the side on this side here. So I guess, obviously, the wheels, mm -hmm. uh, tire, brakes setup kind of stand out. So let's talk about that. So, like I was saying before, the Rays 57DRs, uh, 38 offset. I run a 3mm spacer in the front just for the sake of it. Uh, spoon calibers are still one of my favorite mods as so well. So clean. Uh, I'm super OCD and I had spoon uh, lug nuts to match it at one point, but the color actually wasn't as close to the, the calibers I would have liked, so I ended up getting the raised ones instead. Nice. Uh, the, uh, the center caps on totally match, it's as close as it's going to get. Uh, and that's really it for the side of the car besides the HFP kit. Uh, I do have my custom Burke Racing windshield banner that I forgot about. Uh, I've been through four of those. I bought a set of two <laughs> and I installed them both wrong and had to throw them out so I had to buy an extra set. Um, but yeah, that's it for the side I think. Dang. Uh, so HFP kit, window visors, what uh, visors are these? Uh, weather tech? The, uh, the weather tech ones. Nice, okay. And then, oh, tires too. You're running yeah. some sticky tires. Yeah, so I have RE71Rs up front, and then I have the Yokohama S drives in the back. I'll upgrade those to something different. I've had those since I had my white wheels back mm -hmm. in the day. God, that curb wheel is so bad. They discontinued these. They don't make the same color anymore. I wanted to buy like one individual one to replace it. Uh huh. And it's like version two of this color now, so I can't get the same one. Yeah, real clean. Yeah, the one that uh, I picked up was like a little bit of blue. Uh -huh. Like, uh, I don't know what the color color code, but yeah, a little bit grayish, a little bit blue, yeah, blue like, but. They call them gun blue. And then yeah, like, gun blue, that's yeah, it. This is version one, and then apparently version two. Like, it probably looks the same, but it's gonna, it would piss me off my OCD a little bit, so. They look pretty different, I have to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and that's exactly why. So eventually I'll find somebody in Austin that does mm -hmm. uh, uh, like curb, curb rash repair. And I'll okay. Get that fixed probably just because. The longer it stays like that, like I haven't, that's the one and only mm. time I've curved it, but the more time goes on, the more dirt gets in there, and the worse it looks. Yeah. It's so bad when it first happened. But. Okay. Is there a reason for running, like, uh, uh, I guess, 
different tire setups as well as a staggered setup? Um, so the only real reason, uh, 255s would be really hard to fit in the back, people do it, but mm -hmm. it's mostly a straight line car for me. I will do some stuff with Coda eventually, but I know everybody says, that, oh, I'm gonna track my car eventually, but I will, I promise it will happen. Uh, but I really still only need the wider tires in the front. The narrow ones will help it rotate as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, it was just cheaper. I had that, those had plenty of life on them when I had it. Uh, they fit really easily up underneath the quarter panel without having to mess around with it too much. There's like no camber involved. Um, okay. Like if I had a much wider wider tire, I would have to camber in more. And mm -hmm. then that kind of defeats the purpose of having a wider tire. So it's got a full contact patch all the way around, like only minus one camber, so. Nice, okay. And I guess running, I guess RE71s on both front and rear is a little too much of an overkill. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, I'm not tracking the car that hard for me to right. worry about it. And also, I mean, there's, there's always an argument to just go out and track your car, but there's also people who will say like, you know, if you have too good of tires on your car, like it'll mask bad drive, driving habits. So uh -huh. figure if it, if it rotates a little better in the rear, that's probably okay. Otherwise I'll just push it too hard and I'll change tires eventually and then I'll end up on a wall. So. <laughs> Man, so clean. Okay, let's see. Side and then, yeah, rear end. I do have to say this car, I guess because my rear end looks super lame, this rear end really stands out to me. So yeah, quick rundown on the rear end. Rear end, same thing. Pretty, pretty, pretty stock. Um, all I have is, actually really all I have is the HFP lift and then my, uh, my vanity plate, I've carried that from <laughs> Pennsylvania to Texas. I uh, have the same one in Pennsylvania, but I moved out here as soon as I got my Texas plate. I actually got pulled over in my other car and I, you know, honestly lost track of time and the guy asked me why I didn't have uh, a Texas license. He was like, uh -huh. did you just move here? And he checked the registration and it was like six months ago. Ooh. He was like, you didn't just move here. So I had to get a Texas license, Texas plates. Uh, unfortunately, I was able to get the exact same plate as I um, as I had in Pennsylvania. So <laughs> I'm going to keep carrying that one with me as long as I can, no matter where I go. Um, nice. I, I get a lot of laughs about it. You're actually on the way down here, some guy, I'm not sure if you saw the, uh, the red Colorado, but he looked over at me and he was like, wah. Like, <laughs> That's it gets funny. a good laugh, you know, it's kind of lame, but I'm going to keep it. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, Alright, the interior. Let's check out the interior. I want to keep the best for the last, the engine bay, but let's check out the interior. I've got my tools and shit in there, I'll probably leave Oh, no worries. Ooh, so... In here, first thing I noticed is this, are these all custom? Yeah, so that yeah. was, I shouldn't say custom, I was able to buy the material from uh, some place online, but huh. you have to open up the door panel and there's like little plastic rivets you have to drill out, and then you can pull off the original uh, fabric and then stick that right over. Okay, mm -hmm. even goes to the shift boot, you know, little matchy matchy theme. Yeah. What a uh, shift knob is that? That's a mod diction, I think. I think. That was so many years ago, but yeah, the guy okay. actually used to be super local to me back in Pennsylvania, and so I ordered it, and it was delivered later that day because he just threw it in my mailbox. Um, nice. But yeah, outside of that, the interior is pretty stock. I have the bride center console here. Nice touch. Cool. I like then, the red stitching. Yeah, I think that's all. That's all probably gonna go eventually. I want to get like blue Recaro DC5 R seats or something. Ooh. So with that, all the red's gonna have to go because right. it'll clash. Uh, outside of that, it's just the head unit and then all my gauges up there. All right, Kenwood hit unit. Man, I, I've been trying to find a setup like that too, just because, uh, you know, OEM hit unit. Yeah, I had it for a while, and then you know, I moved out here and honestly just didn't know where the hell I was driving, so I wanted to have ways like very clearly up in front of me. Mm -hmm. uh, is it Apple CarPlay or? Yeah, that one does CarPlay. Nice. Too, Might cool. have to ask you more information yeah, about that. Sure. It's super like OEM, this, this yeah, whole I setup. I try to keep it subtle. I mean, I have, I think a lot of people go over the top, but I will say mine's pretty boring in comparison. Um, no, real clean. Like like you said, some of them have the crazy setups, yeah. but yours could look like you came from factory. So. Exactly. So, I mean, the only other thing I'll probably do is I want to get some of these classic bits probably in carbon fiber. Ooh. A lot of people do that. Um, okay. I think you can get the gauge pods in carbon too. I'll probably have to sell that. That's one of those elusive accelerate gauge pods. Um, back in the forum days, they were super popular, but I don't think they make them anymore. Okay. They might. I actually don't remember. But um, so let's see. AM good, uh, boost gauge as well as two uh, innovate yeah, boost so the gauges. AM one is an OBD two gauge. Uh, I usually use that just to monitor my intake temps. And then the one on the top left, innovate gauge that does wide band boost pressure, um, ethanol content, and fuel oh. temperature. Dang. And the one on the right is oil temp and oil pressure. Oh wow, so that's that's pretty cool. And like I said, I really like the whole, I never got to check out the interior, but it's really clean setup, just like the outside. Um, uh, I guess the interior, anything else? That's about it? No, that's real. Actually, I had this fancy <laughs> Mugen, um, Ooh. 
rear view mirror cover from a Honda Fit, I think. They had like really wow. fits. Um, I was able to grab that from one of my favorite builds back in the day. This is like 2014-15. Uh, former Instagram name was FG2Matt. Uh, he was parting out, and at the time, broke college kid, that was the only thing I could afford. Uh, but I wanted to make sure I grabbed that. And it fits just yeah, right on? It's, it slides right over. I mean, it's a little loose for the stock mirror. The Honda Fit one is a little bit bigger from my understanding, but from the outside, it looks okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm okay with that. That's you know, was awesome. Really big back in college, it was like taking parts from some of my favorite builds when they parted out, and I wanted to mm -hmm. keep a piece of those yeah. with me. Um, so it's a little detail, but it's the thing that, that you know reminds me of all the people I've met along the way. Thanks nice. Like all right, let's check out the engine bay. All right, engine bay. So this is where I know both myself as well as some of you guys might be interested. Ooh, so clean as well. So yeah, let's get right to it. Tell us more about this uh, setup, what you have going on here. Okay, so it's, um, first and foremost, it's a stock bottom end K20 uh, Z3, this factory engine that came with it. I only did valve springs and head studs just because I was projecting to make about 20 pounds of boost, which I've surpassed. It makes 20 or 22 depending on the day. Uh, so valve springs, head studs, just to make sure that it doesn't uh, doesn't lift the head on me. And then, so for the supercharger kit, it's a Merc Racing uh, TBS 1900 supercharger. He's since switched to Harup units, but internally they're the same thing. And I have the stop crank pulley with the 3.2 inch blower pulley. It spins it around like 14,500 RPMs. It makes 20, 22 pounds of boost. Okay, wow. And I, let's see. Um, I've got, oh yeah, J37 throttle body I have. It's a custom four inch intake that I made. It's huge. <laughs> and, um, oh yeah, the ice box, like I said, uh, that was made custom for me by my tuner, Derek, at IMW. That's been, and that's kept with me since my, uh, my CT kit as well. People ask me to buy that all the time and I just, I can't let it go. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, same thing. I had, I didn't use it the last time I raced it, but if you pop this open, um, a little bit of pressure, bear with me. There we go. Um, so I just do a straight water mixture in this. Some people do antifreeze or coolant, but it doesn't really get that cold here. So I don't have to worry about it. And there's a little filter down at the end of the pipe here. So if I want to put ice in there, mm -hmm. I won't send ice through the reservoir or I won't send ice to the cooling system and block it up, but it'll keep the IATs like down below ambient, which is cool. Okay. Um, wow. And what, what else? Um, oh yeah. More things with the cooling system. I remember, um, Jose at Merc Racing started selling these like really aggressive like much more powerful water pumps mm -hmm. which i bought and that was really cool but it was actually um aerating the water going through the system which is completely counterproductive so what i had to do is i stole an idea from the gt 500s i guess ford had the same problem mm -hmm. with that same water pump and more cars so i bypassed some of the flow through to the ice box so there's a this is all three quarter inch hose but i put a washer in here or a restrictor if you want to be fancy uh, so it just takes a very small amount of the flow out from these hoses so that way it, do it doesn't send too much pressure through here and everything actually works the way it's supposed to okay wow yeah i love like you even got the valve car painted yeah. to match the car same same color and everything it's close enough close um, enough yeah white powder coat i need to uh, i replaced my valve cover uh base gasket the mm -hmm. other day and then it looks like i tried to get away with not replacing these and that did not work yeah, so small i have small little details yeah this oh yeah, yeah the speed factory uh valve cover hardware spoon i like those stuff. a lot the spoon Ooh. spoon oil cap and then my hybrid racing dipstick is one of my favorites i used to have a k2 in one and that one was just such a pain in the ass to remove i think everybody has the same complaint this one's really nice you just flip this up and it pulls oh, right out dang that's cool and then it locks back in when you flip it nice has spot mounts yeah. yeah it's just oh man it's just so such a clean setup and would you change anything about the supercharger setup um, in the future or will you think like you're pretty happy with this setup i'll do a bigger super supercharger wow uh, for mark racing too yeah, or Jose does the um this is the 1900 like i said and then he goes up to the 2300s would be a 2.3 liter blower uh, if this engine ever lets go which i checked the compression the other day and it's still great so i have no inclination that it would let go anytime mm -hmm. soon uh, but if it were to i'd probably sell this blower to a 2300 build the bottom end i want to stay with the k20 everybody does mm -hmm. k24s Okay. Uh, too much torque and it just breaks things and spins tires um, and they usually make around the same top end with these setups so I'd rather just keep it easier to control and stick with it. Nice, that's awesome man. Super clean engine bay as well. So while we are talking about power, so let's talk about, I guess, a few small stuff we haven't really covered, like the suspension goodies and then, you know, suspension 
Uh, we kind of kind of mentioned about the brakes a little bit, yeah. but yeah, talk about you know okay. what are the power mount suspension and all Minus that stuff. stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. So um, I think the only other thing as far as power goes that I haven't mentioned is just the Skunk 2 Alpha header, mm -hmm. which has been great to me. Uh, they are, they do have a tendency to crack, which I think I think I told you mine might have been <laughs> actually one of my uh, one of the bolts off the back of the head just vibrated loose, so I just had to okay. tighten that up. Uh, same thing when if and when the engine lets go, I'm going to do an ASP custom header with the reverse Ooh. megaphone. Uh, just because I think if you look at my dyno chart, it keeps climbing, 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 and then right at the top end, it just starts to level out a little bit. I think okay. it's just an exhaust flow restriction. Okay. Uh, so I'll do that. I'll probably do a corded head as well. Uh, other miscellaneous mods that I have on the car, as far as suspension goes, is just D2 coilovers. Mm -hmm. I've had that just about as long as I've owned the car, about six years now. Okay. They've been great to me. They're super comfortable. They're a little soft, but like I said, they're comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, serves my purposes perfectly fine. Um, I also have, I'm surely forgetting things, but I also have the full race lower control arm bushings. They call them the traction balls. I have mm -hmm. those. And then uh, energy suspension, steering rack bushings, and then blocks, uh, subframe bushings. Okay, wow, uh, man. The collars, I think they call them. But I think that's it. There's really not too much extra that I didn't need to do. Like, I went, mm -hmm. I went pretty crazy on the fuel system, but it's just not one of those things you want to skimp out on, you know? Like, uh, yeah. I did. It's a full Dash 8 feed, 6 a.m. return, um, mm -hmm. ID 1300 injectors, a Walbro 525 pump, and then radium pressure regulator, the fuel pulse damper, and then the fuel filter, all radium stuff. Okay. Just one, one thing I will never skimp out on. I mean, I don't really cheap out on too much, but mm -hmm. I buy everything that I buy usually serves a purpose, unless the calipers, I just bought those because they look cool. Um, JDM points. <laughs> yeah. Points, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't really, I really have too much extra that I didn't feel, feel that I really need. And that's, I think, one of the reasons why I've been able to get it to this point is I haven't spent too much on just random, random mm -hmm. miscellaneous yeah. cheap parts, which are cool, but I just, not, they're not. For sure, it's like a really, really detailed build. Um, again, Ian's been building this car for seven years. So, um, yeah, I know some people like when they look on social media, like, oh, bam, the car looks so badass. They want to get there like in one month. I mean, sure, if you have the money, but you know, I, I appreciate builds like this really clean inside and out. It's just, I have to say personally, this is my favorite 8th gen in Texas. Like it's so clean. It's just really well built all around. And this is car goals right here for 8th gen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, one other thing I noticed is you did relocate the battery to the trunk yes. as well. Uh, so that I just did. I could have stuck with the, I had the hybrid racing relocate tray, which was mm -hmm. fine, but the only issue I have with that is just such a pain in the ass to actually remove the battery. Okay. I finally came up with my own little tricks for that. You can, I used to just wrap the strap out of it and just hoist the battery out with the mm. tray in one shot, which worked. Um, but I'm also thinking about making a second reservoir for the supercharger for the intercooler mm, rather, okay. down in that spot. So just trying to clear out some space. So I'll put the battery up in the back. Um, didn't totally love the process. It works now, um, but it, also, it depends how you want to look at it. Some people who like do autocross and they track their cars, they want the mm -hmm. weight balance in the back. Right. You drag racing and things like that, you want more weight in the front. It just kind of mm. depends what you're doing. Okay. Uh, I was really just trying to clear out some space for other things that I was working on. Yeah, I mean, for sure with the supercharger setup, there's quite a bit of stuff going on here at Icebox. Um, Inner cooler is super like self mold too. Like mm -hmm. you can barely see it. Yep. They paint it black. Yeah. I want to get the second one. They come in black. I want to get oh, okay. the second one. My intake temps are usually pretty good, but it's just one of those things I get super OCD about. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll probably do a second heat exchanger. Like I said, another uh, like a second one or two down. That's more of a problem where I can fit. Nice. All right. So before we wrap up on what's been done, pretty much I think we talk about everything that's been done to the car, right? Mm -hmm. For for the most part. Um, tell us a little story about that Ferrari thing that happened. <laughs> that was super awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, me and my girlfriend were out. Uh, we watched the Penn State game and we were drinking our sorrows a little bit because they're doing really bad this year. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was just scrolling. Around. I was pretty bored, admittedly. I wanted to go home, so I'm just scrolling through my phone. I've got like 6% left on it, and I just get this targeted ad for um, like drag racing at Coda. And I, I've been getting things for that event, the uh, like, the whole month actually uh -huh. i just thought it was a car show i'm like yeah i'm not gonna spend money for a car show and it just said like roll racing i'm like well that's just honda bread and butter roll racing um, yeah so last minute i showed up i texted my roommate and i was like hey can you be my pit crew and before he, <laughs> he asked me like when and where and my phone died um <laughs> at that point like I, we didn't get home until two in the morning and so he was long asleep i'm like well like, i have to i woke up at like six in the morning to make sure i had to drive back to go to put like a new exhaust gasket on it a couple other things just to get together it was mostly ready to race but not mm -hmm. quite 
Um, and then I found out that racing didn't start until like 1 p.m. So I woke up way too early for that. Uh, but yeah, I was I had entered in the front wheel drive class, and it turns out that I was the only front wheel drive car there. So by default, <laughs> I got the participation trophy for that. Um, okay. Yeah, it wasn't the most organized event, but they just mm -hmm. pretty much lined everybody up, and they're like, whoever you're paired with, you go. Yeah. And I just happened to end up next to the Ferrari. I'm like, I'm so it's a random. Yeah, totally. Okay. Random. Just like you could be left lane, right lane, wherever you wanted to gotcha. go. Gotcha. And I was like, pretty. I was pretty far back from him at one point, and then I had to know where my row just went up, like a couple feet and I'm like I'm counting the cars once I start getting closer and I'm going like that car goes with this guy and I keep going I'm like mm -hmm. this goes the way it's supposed to I'm like I'm gonna be paired to the Ferrari I'm like shit it's a Ferrari 430 430, 430 yeah. okay and we got lined up and like somebody's car broke down like on the second race I think it actually caught on fire Ooh. as far as I know everything's okay with that car now but I was just like and the only thing is like the longer it sits it gets hot because the intercooler really only pulls air in if the car is moving it's, it's uh -huh. Uh, so I'm just like watching my intake temps, they're getting higher and higher, I'm like, shh, this isn't really go very well. <laughs> and then I also look over and I'm like, I'm like, if it's manual, maybe I could outshift him. And then I just see that he has the paddle shifters, I'm like, alright, so we're going to try flat foot shifting today. Um, and I mean, it's pretty easy, it was like a 40, it was a 40 to 60 mile an hour roll. I wanted to shoot mm -hmm. for 60, but that 300 feet came up a lot faster than I thought it was going to. Okay. And what happened after that, so like the light one green, I'm like, alright, let's go. And pretty much next to each other and then like I said I flat footed shifted in the fourth mm -hmm. and I just kind of start, started to watch him go a little bit behind me I'm like Ooh. okay all right and then that was it and I rolled back around and then the whole crowd cheered for me that was really cool like if mm -hmm. the car was one thing but I got the whole round of applause for everyone that's so awesome that really cool. and so I've gotten a couple videos from people that were uh, in the stands there which was nice my GoPro died uh, really, really upsetting. It was like, I never use it, uh, so I guess I just don't know how to use it the right way. And I thought it was recording, and I guess it was recording up until the point that we went, and I tried to press the record button. Uh, but my dash cam that I ha I've had for like the last six years, um, like, records like 480p, but that was able to record the video of the run and everybody's reaction when it came back in, so at least I got that. Really cool. That's awesome. So fourth gear was when you pull right yeah. past him. Yeah, and most, most of the race was third, and then as soon as I okay. got fourth, it. That's awesome. Was it about a quarter mile, or do you it's know a, what the distance? About a thousand feet, so a little, little okay. over a quarter mile. Uh, like I said, and I started, I started at a low speed, and that was that actually ended up being my slowest pass of the day. Oh wow! My, my trap was 118, and the next two were 121, 122. Dang! Uh, so it did okay. I thought for sure I was going to be the slowest car because I had like, I had entered into the front wheel drive class. And mm -hmm. I pulled up, I'm like, hey guys, can I just do like testing to him because I don't think I'm going to compete with anybody? Mm. And they're like, yeah, sure. But, like you're the only front wheel drive car here. <laughs> <laughs> So I thought for sure I was gonna be the slowest car. I was just there for fun, but I actually, like, I saw when I was when I was parked like in the pits and just like let the car cool off. I saw I don't know what they were, but I kept seeing uh, speeds pop up that were slower than me. So I, that in and of itself was cool. I thought it was gonna be the slowest car, so I took the Ferrari, and then I still wasn't the slowest car of the day. So that's awesome. Yeah. Like I leave these like underdog stories where, and like you said, you weren't even like prepared for it. Yeah. You were just like, let's go for it. <laughs> That's, that's usually how it goes like if i if i'm like oh we're gonna do this and i over prepare for it then like i'm over prepared and i'm just anxious the whole time actually that's a lie i was anxious as hell the whole day um but i think that's probably what made it better it's just like last minute thing like i have no excuses not to do it the car right. runs it's together like just go race it and that's what happens so that's awesome man all right so one thing we forgot to mention uh was the transmission yeah, yeah. i don't know how i forgot to bring that up but it's a built transmission it's a pp pbg uh First through fourth gear, it's the all motor ratios. I also have hard and sleeved in it, the Synchrotech carbon synchros, and I also did drive side shop 2.9 axles. Dang, okay. okay. What do you say, like, if you're running a supercharger setup, say on stock trans, uh -huh. Uh, stock bottom end and everything would it still work or yeah, I, I had it stock trans stock bottom end for the first year that i ran this setup but okay issue. okay uh, when i had the transmission built the guy said that everything looked great uh -huh. it does have only sixty six thousand miles on it so wow okay uh, pretty low mileage so they probably wouldn't have held up to the abuse over time but you can do it what i would tell anybody is if you're looking to cross over like 400 horsepower just be prepared for it to happen at okay. some point because it probably will uh-huh uh, but I had no, it showed me no signs of breaking. I just got a good deal, for like holiday special. That's awesome. Set. I was planning on doing a, a road trip out to Georgia for another video, and uh, that, that fell through. But I had already <laughs> bought the gear set at that point. So just went with it, and I, mean, I don't regret it. It sounds cool driving around, too. So that's I awesome. I don't have to worry about it anymore. So. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to wrap up the video here again. Big thank you to Ian for uh, sharing with us about the car. So where can they find you? Like, you know, Instagram, you, you have a small YouTube channel, Instagram, everything. Yeah, yeah. Instagram is 8K underscore photography. Link it right here. Yep. Uh, and then we have my YouTube is Pauly P. 
which I have like three videos on there. Everybody asks me to make a YouTube channel and I keep forgetting. I usually just get lost in the garage and I forget to record everything. <laughs> I will, if requested, I will keep making more videos. Guys, just tell me what you want to see and I'll try mm -hmm. to make a, make a point to make those videos. Um, outside of that, Facebook is my name, Ian Palmieri. I usually, I only accept from requests from people that I actually know, so the best place to get to me, I'll answer anybody's messages anywhere, mm -hmm. uh, but usually Instagram is the best place to get in touch with me. Okay, and he's also like one of the admins on the 8gen page, yep. so if anybody owns an 8gen SI or even just Hondas, right? Yep. Even Honda Civics? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, he's always on there responding to questions, super friendly, super helpful, especially for someone who like, you know, pretty new to the scene, well, at least with the 8gen. So, bunch of facts on there, he's just all around, super cool guy, super cool build. So again, big thank you, man. Thank you, I seriously, seriously I appreciate it. Yeah. If you guys stick to the end, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new to the channel, hit that notification bell so you know when new videos are out. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next one.